Once I got this shot into the edit, it became pretty clear that just this alone wasn't going to be able to convey the feeling of being in a really tight crawl space with a whole bunch of bear traps that could get you at any moment. So I decided creating a completely digital shot would really help convey that feeling and maybe even tell a little story within a story. So today I wanted to break down that completely digital shot here and maybe give you some tips on how you can go about creating your own photorealistic environments as well. So first of all, let's talk about the main elements here. This whole tunnel is made up of four different parts and these are just kind of squarely put against each other. And if I go into edit mode, you can actually see they're pretty simple. They're just planes subdivided a few times. Most of the magic is inside of the modifier tab here on the side. First of all, we've got a subdivision with four viewport subdivisions and six in the render, which is actually pretty hefty. But that is just because we want to add in a displacement map that has a lot of detail here. And I got this map from the same material that I'm using for the shading so that the textures and the shading line up with the geometry here that's being displaced. Now to do that, you can go into the settings here and image or movie, I've loaded in the same displacement map. And that's how I built up the kind of block wall vibe that's going on here. Now, another thing here in the modifiers that was super handy was this curve modifier. You can see this curve here that's going through the center was dictating how the tunnel bent and turned. And I decided to go a little bit away from a completely straight on look. One, just to kind of make it feel more claustrophobic and long, and two, I didn't have a digital actress that I was going to animate crawling through here. I just wanted to have her coming up to the point where you could just barely see the flare light and that would be all for the shot. Now from this perspective, looking at the corner here, it looked very kind of clinical and sharp and very much computer generated. So a solution I had to that was putting in this little strip here that was also following the curve. Once again, just a plane, pretty subdivided, that's following the path of the curve, and it has a displacement. But that still wasn't really doing the trick, so I threw in a couple of ground 3D scans, which you can see here if I solo it. And these are some scans that I got from Ian Hubert's Patreon. So those ended up helping add a lot more kind of realism to the corners here, just making them look grungy and like there was time for a lot of dirt and stones to collect in the corners. Now, another element that I wanted to add in was of course the traps. And you can see in this shot, there's not nearly as many as in the previous shot where there were a whole bunch of them. I just wanted to keep it looking a little bit dangerous, but I wasn't going to all the trouble of putting in like a whole particle system for them. And the fun little story within a story that I added was I just kind of wanted to make it look even more dangerous. What happened to other people that have come through here before? And you can see here, I've got another layer with some bones on it that I found on BlendSwap. And you can see there's just a bone that's clamped in here. Maybe somebody got stuck and they just couldn't get out, which kind of adds a little bit more tension to the scene. So I was pretty happy with the way this ended up serving the shot in the end. Now, another element of the shot that kind of added a little bit of dis-ease was the camera animation itself. If we kind of scrub through here, you can see it starts fairly upright. And then if I just zoom in, it's got a little bit, very, very slightly bit of Dutch angle going on, which kind of psychologically makes people feel like something's off. It's very, very subtle. But <laughs> another thing that I threw in to help add more realism was a bit of camera shake, which once again is more noticeable if I speed up through the shot. You can see the camera's shaking all over the place. And for that, I just used Ian Hubert's camera shakeify add-on, which is excellent. I'll put a link to that in the description. And the other thing with this slow dolly inwards kind of gives you a feeling of creeping towards the subject, which helps a little bit with the uneasy feeling. So that was another element I threw in there. And then of course, this is the rendered view without any lighting. Here is the main light source. The environment isn't lighting it at all because I kind of wanted to make this feel like it was in the belly of the tunnel right in the middle where no other lights would show up, which kind of helps with the claustrophobic feeling. Although it looks like we've got a little bit of green light going on here at the end. This little emission plane is giving some light off from the forest that she just came out of. But like I said, the main light here is this right here, which if we look in the shading settings is lit by an image sequence of the flare from the shot before, which I've explained in detail in another tutorial, which I'll link in the description. But this little guy has some random movement that I picked up from a tracking object, 
and it's got that random flicker of the flare. So that helps it become kind of an uneasy and flickering light source, which adds a little bit more creepy vibes to the whole thing. You can see with this empty that the light is parented to, I baked the tracking constraint into F curves. So there's lots of keyframes here. And once you do that, you can't really keyframe animate it very well. So what I've done here is I've parented this empty to another empty, and this just kind of represents Jacqueline's position in the shot. And you can see this is really simple. It's only got one keyframe at the start and one keyframe at the end as she crawls through the tunnel. And that's just got the light going closer and closer to the camera without actually coming around the bend. So I didn't have to animate any kind of digital double or anything like that. One more thing that I noticed as I was looking at the reference footage that we got was after we shot with the flare for a little bit, the tunnel was filling up with smoke and getting this really nice kind of volumetric fog. And so I tried to emulate that in this scene by adding in an atmosphere layer. And if I go into the material preview, you can see this is pretty basic stuff, probably not exactly accurate motion, but it worked well enough in the shot and kind of gave the look of smoke coming off of a flare and smoke just kind of going along the ceiling of the tunnel. So these elements ended up being pretty handy to have for the process. And if you'd like to get your hands on these, there's also a link in the description where you can download those for free. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up this whole... <laughs>